Mark, do you have to set up the Zoom thing or? No, something, no that's all set up. I have to keep an eye on it. So nothing's going to nothing's gonna happen for the first few minutes of your talk, I assume. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> well, good morning and uh, welcome to the second day of this workshop. I will be the chairman this morning and Mark will take care of the Zoom participants. Responsibility. And our first speaker today is Federico Vinda, who will give us a logarithmic sequel to last uh, yesterday's last talk. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it's a sequel, but certainly there are like some some of the words will will reappear certainly. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, right, so uh, everything I'm going to say is a joint work with Tommy Lundemo, Duzon Park, and Polarne Esvar. And let me start with some motivation. Right. So. Um, right, so suppose that R is a um, commutative ring and A is a commutative Sorry. The eerie sounds. Uh, and A is a commutative uh, algebra over R. Then um, Kyle uh, told us yesterday that one can consider interesting invariant, but we all know and love that the auction homology of A relative to R, I will denote it in this way. So this can be defined in uh, uh, several equivalent ways. One way that was some object of discussion yesterday evening is this external action of S1 on, on um, well, simply short commutative rings or discrete rings in this case, or if you want, Another interpretation is in terms of a derived self intersection of the diagonal, right? So do something like this. One, one less L. Uh, well, I could remove an L if our A was flat over R, right? Which is the classical way to, to write this. So where you write the auction homology as a tor of A uh, against A as A tensor A uh, module. But I mean, in case A is not flat over R, I have to put a little L here too. And we'll forget, I mean, I will drop all the L's because all my tensor products will be derived uh, pretty soon. Okay, so this is an invariant that we all, we all know. And the classical theorem goes back to Oxschild, Constant, and Rosenberg is that uh, if A over R is smooth, so smooth will mean in particular finite type, uh, then uh, there is an isomorphism of graded rings um, between the auxial, uh, auxial homology of A relative to R and the drum, um, well, yeah, the, the Hodge or whatever you want to call it, algebra of A over R. So uh, Kai has stated this for um, smooth things in characteristic zero. Uh, maybe the remark is that, well, you don't need characteristic zero if you are happy with a result about um, isomorphism of uh, graded rings, okay? So uh, this is if R contains Q, then we can give, so we can, uh, let me say a more structured result. Um, which means that you can construct a functorial quasi-isomorphism between the auxial complex uh, and the drum complex. And even more is true, and I refer to a paper by uh, Tuan and Vizzosi in case you're interested. Okay? So see also a paper by Antio and Vizzosi for what goes wrong in, in positive characteristic about this more sophisticated approach. But today we don't don't care about that, so we'll be happy with this uh, sort of unstructured result. And I would like to, uh, well, give you some analogous statement in the logarithmic context. So before that, let me review the proof of this theorem. Okay, so how do you prove it? HKR. Well, um, essentially, it's uh, it's a two steps um, argument. So step number one that you want to prove it for 
free algebras. So for free or polynomial algebras. Over R. Over R. And once you have that, then you can build the um, Andre Quillen spectral sequence. So let me write it here. So what is it about? So uh, it's an E2. Q uh, starts like this. So you have HP of the derived um, exterior power of a cotangent complex with over R, and this converges to H P plus Q of, um, well, uh, H H P plus Q, right? So the homology of a mm, derived strength intersection. That, let me just write it like this. So, auction homology of, uh, of A over R. Okay, so uh, this is a convergence spectral sequence. And uh, if A over R happens to be smooth, then what happens is that this derived self intersection, sorry, this where X0 power of a cotangent complex is just the omega Q of A over R in degree zero. And the uh, spectral sequence collapses and gives you what you want, okay? Gives you the HKR theorem. Okay, so, uh, right, so far so good. So, um, I want to talk to you about a logarithmic analog, okay? So, uh, why do we care about a log extension. So one of the reasons why we really like auction homology is that it has a strong connection with K-theory, right? Through the Dennis trace map. And, but unfortunately, auction homology, and this is a difference uh, compared to what happens in K-theory, does not satisfy localization. Okay? So uh, HH does not satisfy localization. So this was, I mean, this has been known for a long time and it was uh, used in um, a famous paper by Hesselt and Madsen for computing the K-theory of local fields by observing that the, the trace map, well, that's a topological analog, but still sort of the situation is similar, um, can, be, can be enriched in a more structured way. So in order to have as a target, not quite the topological homology of the field, but rather a uh, logarithmic version of it, which is built in terms of Aldousen categories. So that's not quite the approach we're gonna take here, but um, so these are two, two takes on the story, two takes on this. So maybe historically, first one is what I just described in words, so by Hesselhold, Hesselhold Madsen. And then, so in the case of DVRs, and the other one, that's the one I'm gonna focus on is due to John Rogness, so let me tell you a bit about that. So, and I will I'll give you a general definition, but let me say a consequence of this definition. So there is a, so say that A, if a is a, so example, okay? So if A is a, a discrete valuation ring, okay, then there is a cofiber sequence Looks like this. So you have HH of A and HH of A relative to this log structure. So I will say something more about that in a second. And I have a boundary map somehow, which goes down to the homology of a residue field, little k. So little k will be A modulo pi, the uniformizer. Okay, but so this hopefully, but somehow this hopefully is a bit 
it's a bit far off and it's not really clear that one one should really hopeful but at least this let's hope for that but at least this was the original motivation of, of rockness so this is compatible but i will yeah make comments about that towards the end of my talk so compatible with the dennis trace map okay by which i mean that you can form this, the analogous sequence in K-theory. So you have a K-theory of A. Here you don't have a log version. You just take K-theory of a fraction field of A. And here you have um, the K-theory of a residue field okay, with an appropriate, uh, appropriate shift. Or if you want, that's a really consequence of a localization, well-known localization for K-theory. Uh, well, you can form the absolute version of auctionology, of, of, of auctionology as well. So you don't really need to... Yeah. So you don't need to, yeah, I mean, you know, auction homology is somehow relative to Z and topological one is relative to a deeper base uh, S1. But now we are naive, so let's stay on, on Z. Okay, so this is somehow a motivation, okay? So auction logarithmic auction homology is supposed to fix the lack of localization for auction homology. Mm -hmm. And it's, it can be an interesting invariant. So it is quite natural to ask if you have an analogous of uh, this statement, okay? So for, uh, well, you know, log differentials are something that we know uh, know about. And uh, um, so now, hopefully, very, I will give you a definition of this object here. And we would like this theorem to be true, OK? But with the relaxed assumptions that the map of log, well, log rings will be not just uh, smooth as an underlying map of rings, but actually log smooth, which is a much larger class of, uh, much larger class of maps. OK, so this was the. Sort of introduction questions so far, um, right? So maybe let me let me give you okay. So let me give some recollection on log geometry. Recollection on log rings. Okay, so uh, sadly the literature in the log geometry is a bit um, chaotic. At least this is my opinion. <laughs> um, so, so the terminologies are a bit uh, strange, but nevertheless. So let me say what a pre-log ring is. Okay, so this is just a, so a pre-log ring. And for, um, for most of my talk, the difference between a log ring and a pre-log ring will be irrelevant because the sort of the associated log ring to a pre-log ring, whatever the heck this, mean, this is, uh, will really not get into the picture. So in other words, this object will be invariant under a suitable operation called the logification, which passes from a log structure to a pre-log structure to the associated log structure. So let's stick to the like easier uh, thing. So a pre-log ring is a, is a, is a triple, say A M alpha, where well, A is a ring, inclusive ring, uh, M is a monoid, Mutative and alpha is a map from M to the multiplicative monoid of A. All right, so uh, a log ring is the same thing, but the condition that somehow the, there are no more units that the necessary ones. So take alpha minus one of the invertible elements of A, then this is isomorphic to. The invertible elements of A through the map out. Okay, so somehow you don't, you know, M really is honestly giving you uh, new um, elements of your ring over which you want to consider logarithmic poles. Okay, that's sort of the idea. So examples, um, so interesting examples to keep in mind. So of course, any any ring can be considered as a log ring with a sort of what is called the trivial log structure. You just put the monoids. As a monoid, the rings, uh, the units, the units of a ring. Um, so if A is uh, an integral domain, you can consider, say, K to be a spectrum field, and then you have another sort of trivial log uh, log ring given by K and K star, and somehow log geometry allows you to Put something in between, right? So, okay. So, you can take the monoid of non-zero elements of A. Well, that's an honest thing to do. 
Okay, and this sits between A and uh, NK, NK star, okay, NK. So, for example, if, uh, let's just make example one, example two, let's continue on this line. So if A is a discrete valuation ring, that was somehow the motivating example in the localization sequence for auction homology, uh, then you can form this uh, free log structure called the canonical um, free log structure on, uh, on A. So pi is a uniformizer, you're choosing uniformizer of A, but choice doesn't matter for the log structure. Send one to pi. And um, well, yeah, you can also model by pi. Okay, you go to K, residue field. You can look at the composite morphism. This sends one to zero. Okay, and the resulting thing, it's uh, the log, so the standard pair K N with a map, zero map N to K is also another interesting object in log geometry. It's called the standard log point. And the reason why you care about such a thing is because uh, sort of, um, well, working over, the, over this kind of base allows you to consider uh, semi-stable reduction situations as if they were smooth. Okay, so the sort of typical example, things you would like to consider is like K, say T1, Tn over T1, Tr, so so many variables, and log structure given by N to the R, sending the uh, standard basis of N to the R as monoid to the um, variables Ti, so the product would be zero, but single thing. So Ei goes to Ti here. And uh, this is the ex standard example of something that is log smooth over uh, this gadget. Okay, so we'll go back to the notion of log smoothness in the derived context in a, in a, in a bit, but that's sort of the, the kind of things that we would like to consider to be smooth and, and well, well, sadly are not smooth, but they are, they become so if, uh, if you work in the realm of log geometry. So this is a, some kind of small motivation, okay, for you. Yeah, and the map from, is, yeah, it's nowhere to, you know, to make this, uh, no, no, yeah, sure, sure. No, 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 you're, you're right. So you have a canonical, no, I mean, this is the K and N, so there's a square like this. So this sends, uh, you know, N to N, 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 the diagonal, okay? Right, so maps of pre-log rings are whatever you expect. So our commutative squares, you know, map of rings compatible with the maps of monoids and, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, there are like two maybe key words that I need to introduce. So if you are bored, you can Google that. So if uh, we say maybe a just small definition, just because this will come up at some point. So the monoid M, the monoid M will be, it's called fine if it's finely generated. As a monoid over the natural numbers and um, integral. Okay, so i.e., the map from a monoid to its group completion is injective. Okay, that's a sort of one keyword in the in the literature. People usually talk about fine log structures, and the other keyword is uh, saturated. If you're complaining about this terminology, please send an email to Cattle, who is responsible for that. So it's called saturated if it's integral. And as Chuck pointed out, the associated uh, sort of uh, toric variety is normal in the sense of uh, commutative, classical commutative, commutative rings, okay? Or commutative algebra. Or if you want to stay in the realm of uh, monoid, it's the same as saying that the map from M to the group completion doesn't add extra roots, right? So I'm not gonna like say more, more about that, but people usually talk about fine and saturated log structures. And they, since this, the literature is so clear, they say FS for short, okay? So FS log structure. Okay, so these are the things that I, I will show up at some point. Okay, so enough for, for, this, uh, for these things. Um, 
So let me uh, okay. Let me move to a to a drive version of this. Okay. So following uh, uh, Sagave, Shurg, and Vizzosi, uh Let me um, consider the category of simplicial free log rings. So uh, this is exactly what you expect. So you take uh, A will be a simplicial commutative ring or an animated ring if you prefer. And uh, you take uh, M, a simplicial commutative monoid, and you look at maps from M to A. Okay, that's a simplicial, or if you want equivalently, it's a simplicial object in the category of free log rings. Okay, that's also an animated um, free log ring. Okay, so that's uh, uh, intuitive definition. Maybe uh, a remark is that you can we can define similarly uh, sort of log rings, so simplicial log rings, similarly to the class to the discrete situation, uh, but these are not not. Simplicial objects in log rings. This Malvis operation of looking at the groups uh, of the units is uh, inherently derived. Okay, so anyway, so um, okay, so that's uh, this is a category I would I will work with because you know it's a natural the natural context for formulating problems in optimology is derived one. I mean the notion is inherently derived, especially if you take that. Uh, second approach as a self intersection of a diagonal. So this is somehow the setting that I will that I will consider. So uh, right. So given a simplicial commutative monoid, given uh, M simplicial commutative monoid, I can form group completion of the um, of a simplicial commutative monoid, which is well one model for that would be loops over suspension of M. Okay, so this is a group-like uh, simplicial commutative monoid. It's a group-like, here just means that the pi zero is a group, okay? And on the pi naught is exactly doing what you expect. So it's the sort of group completing the discrete monoid uh, pi zero, pi zero of M. So uh, one can, uh, for, okay, so this is like another definition. And uh, so if you have a map, of simplicial commutative monoids, you can form a certain a certain pullback, which is called the, the exactification or the repletion according to the context of this map. Okay, so this is now, now a bit, bit technical. Um, I will try to get a geometric motivation for this construction in, in a second. So we call the repletion of M with respect to N this product. So we take M over uh um sorry uh what am i what am i taking right moment of panic no okay so we take uh right uh n over yeah this makes sense n right i guess so uh sorry <laughs> so you have a map from uh the from m group to n group okay so you can uh you you right so you get the corresponding map, and then uh, uh, then you want to somehow pull back elements of n along the along this um, along this morphism. Okay. So of course we would say that m is replete if it agrees with its repletion, and in uh, this, in the context of discrete log rings or discrete monoids, this is what Cato called um, uh, exact. Okay. So the notion of exactification or or of exactness for morphism of, of monoids. Okay. So you can uh, whatever you can form a repletion of any simplicial simplicial commutative monoid with respect to a map of simplicial commutative monoids. And this is a key um, notion that you need to, to introduce to define uh, logarithmic auction homology following Rognes. Okay, so now I can I can give you that. So definition, so Rognes. The following, so suppose we have a map um, RP to AM, so a map of uh, um, simplicial Three, three log rings. I can consider the uh, cyclic bar construction of M relative to P. So this is just you know in um, 
simplicial degree n, I take the um, n fold co-product of m over p, which makes sense in the category of commutative monoids, and then you play with the differentials. Whereas what, the formula that you can write down, I'm not going to write them down, but this makes sense, okay? It is an augmented, uh, so this is the cyclic bar construction. Okay, and is augmented over M. Okay, so you have a natural map to M for this thing. So you can form the repletion to be the repletion of this thing with respect to, uh, to, respect to this map, okay, to the, to the augmentation to M. So it's a repletion of Okay, so things are getting getting nasty, but they're almost there. So now we can finally define what uh, log auction homology is for this for this pair. So H H O um, R P A M is defined as follows. So Essentially, you want to glue the auction homology, classical auction homology of A relative to R in a way that takes into account the extra information coming from the monoid, the map of monoids. Okay. So the first piece is you take this guy, and then this happens to receive a map from uh, this thing. Which is not crazy to think about, right? If you imagine that this is a bar construction of A relative to P, and you have a map from M to A and from P to R, okay, then you can take the cyclic bar construction of M relative to P, you can form the group, the, 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 the ring, monoid ring, whatever, so Z of this thing, and then you get a map from, uh, uh, get a map from this ring, this simplicial ring to this simplicial gadget. Okay, but this also has a map to the repletion. So glue them together in this way. So, all right. So this is a completely counterintuitive definition. Okay. So because there are like, I mean, okay, this we have some grasp of, of on what this is supposed to be. I mean, this has a geometric description, right? As a drive self-intersection of a diagonal, and you're doing something. Okay. So that's not very that's not very easy to work with. Okay, so one of the one of the purposes of uh, sort of our work was to get another description of this gadget, so to be more able to get some geometric intuition uh, out of it, and that's what we what we do. So, yeah, by degree wise, taking z of uh, yeah of the monoid, correct. Okay, so um, right. So in order to justify ah another comment that I want to make is that. The description of auction homology in terms of um, derived self-intersection of a diagonal uh, somehow makes it clear that there is some connection with the differentials, right? Because we know that the uh, in the composable of the um, you know in the composables of the uh, of the diagonal is exactly you know, the normal bundle of that, right? It's exactly i mod i square, which are the differentials. So that description is really useful to understand that there is a connection between differentials and and auction homology. And, and uh, so this is sort of the thing we are we are after. Okay, so to uh, somehow justify uh, another description of this actual homology guy, let me have a discussion about log differentials first. And cotangent uh, complex. Okay, uh, so. This is maybe the original motivation for uh, for log geometry. Okay, so you have uh, uh, you have ring A and you have your monoid M, and you have a map of monoids from M to A, and somehow you want to say that this uh, log structure is the same thing as cutting uh, a divisor on spec of A along the image of M. Okay, so that's sort of the sort of the idea, and the log structure is supposed to fit between uh, A and uh, and uh, maybe, well, this is, I don't want to, I want to specify the log structures here. So 
between the ring and the ring with uh, m minus one inverted localization of a to the image respectively to the image of m, right? And the uh, log forms do exactly that, right? So they fit in between these two. So log forms of on, on so sorry forms on a and forms on this localization, and in between you have log forms, right? So you have so on differentials you have omega one of a, so KR differentials. This is generated by d of a. Then you have omega one of a m minus one. So this is generated by things like d a over m or any m in m. So like arbitrary poles, I would move the thing. Right. So d a over m. And here in between, you have omega one of a comma m. So the log differentials, and these are generated by d a and the m over m. So you you only allow logarithmic poles along m. Okay, this is all very very classical and uh, it was just a, uh, you know, it's morning, so let's, let me gentle. Okay, um, so this is one. This is one one thing. So you can define in general. So in general, uh, we define for a map of uh, for R P to A M map of discrete free log rings. We define omega one. A M R P as the the A module that co-represents uh, log derivations, which are are linear. So um, let me let me pause for a second. So this gadget here is a module over A. So there's no such a thing as a log module. Okay, so this is really a module over. So this is built out of a log structure of, of uh, on A is built out of a log structure on on R, but the, the resulting thing is a module on A. Okay, so somehow this is suggesting that this thing could be should be describable in terms of well the uh, geometry of A maybe with some modification relative to R. Uh, Intrinsically, okay, so without really uh, talking about some fancy and non clear category of modules over log rings. Okay, so this is an observation. I think it goes back to work of uh, Kato and uh, uh, Saito, Takeshi Saito, on the you non know, blocks conductor formula, where they actually explored this uh, in, uh, in, some, in some details. And uh, uh, yeah, so and that's sort of what they discovered. So let me write lemma. Kato, Kato Saito. So, so let epsilon be well. No, to call epsilon. So maybe. Oh, let me just copy a formula. Okay. So, um, okay. So let's see. No, I don't want to do that. Let me. Oh, let me let me first give you a geometric picture. So. All right, so um, let's see. So differentials are, as we said, right? The classical differentials are uh, in the composables of a diagonal, right? And you can try to do the same here. So you can try to say, well, let's move a diagonal. Let's consider A tensor over R A, okay? And then you look at the corresponding thing on the monoids. Okay, you have this co-product. Okay, and this goes down to A. M, right? So by by multiplication on A and summation on M. Yeah, so this is the diagonal data or multiplication. You know, on, on, on spec of things would be the diagonal. And uh, so you can take the, the kernel of U. This is not, this is already like a bit problematic because what is the kernel of the map of monoids, right? The monoid is not pointed, there is no zero. So what, what do I mean by that? So not clear, but most importantly, I, uh, I would get on the, I mean, any, any possible definition would be something like uh, a sub module of, of A and a sub thing of a monoid, right? So it would be a pair. Okay, and uh, the first gadget of a pair of this pair would be I, mod I, I the classical um, kernel of a multiplication map. 
And the indecomposable of this would be, or the conormal bundle of this would be just I mod I square. So somehow I only recover, if, if even if I could make sense to this thing, I would only recover, so would only recover, recover uh, the classical differentials, omega one over A over R as a module. So instead what, uh, and now here we have what Kato and Saito observe, is that you can look at this map of um, pre-log rings and you, you realize that this map is not exact, okay? So, or if you want, there is something, so this, is, this, is corresponding, this corresponds to a closed inversion of, uh, of, of um, schemes, right? So it's the, the spe uh, speck of A inside uh, two copies of, uh, of the speck of A. Well, speck of A, I'm sorry, speck of A tensor <laughs> over R A, you know, power product over R. And uh, um, somehow, the log structure that you have, so the map of um, corresponding map on the log structures is not strict. It means that the log structure that you get on this guy here is not the restriction of a log structure that you get on this other guy. So let me see, let me show you a picture, okay? So for example, if you have A1, so this would be A1 with uh, the classical log structure sending N to T to the N, so as the origin. Okay, and then you get two copies of, of A1. So you have a, you're in a fine space, A2. And the diagonal looks like this, right? And the log structure of the diagonal uh, locally around this point okay, is of um, sort of one, is of dimension one, right? So it has only the monoid N uh, floating around. And on the other hand, if you were to restrict the log structure given by A2 with these two axes, Along this line, in this point, you would get two copies of n, which is a bit uh, unnatural. So somehow the, 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 the closed subscheme doesn't really have the correct log structure that you would get naturally if you forget about this log structure. You just say, well, just put a scheme inside it and pull back the log structure from the ambient space. So this doesn't happen, okay? And the, the technical way to formulate this is that this immersion is not uh, exact. Or is not, and actually is equivalent to say that the map is not strict in this case for closed immersion. Okay, so uh, somehow Kato originally realized that these are not the, the, the nice uh, closed immersions that you want to consider in log geometry. Okay, you really want to consider the strict ones, the exact ones. So this is not one of them, but you can make it exact. You can make it exact by a blow up. You can blow up this point and you get to a to a situation where the corresponding thing becomes, so the corresponding strict transform of the diagonal becomes exact. So in a completely algebraic way, what you do is you form the repletion of this map in a, in a way which is similar to what I described before. So that's what they do. So let's say, so consider the replete diagonal so geometrically, this is exactly what I, what I described, okay? But algebraically, there is a formula. So take A tensor of R of A, and then you tensor up along Z and plus PM with Z and plus PM repletion relative to P. Okay, and you get the map down to A. The repletion is on the old thing. Yes, it's on the old thing. Okay, well, right, this is repletion relative to M, okay? Maybe I should specify this. Hmm? So, uh, well, I mean, this, is, this is magic, right? So why is it magic? Because now we have converted the problem, which is, was phrased in terms of pairs, low pre-log rings. Now is a problem about rings. This is a ring. This is a map of rings, right? So, yeah, sure. Repletion is pairs. Yeah. Uh, differences, but long as the difference is integral. Sounds about right. right. Sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You can have the same denominator. Yeah. Yeah, in the group completion. Yeah. In the group completion. Yes. Well, that's what. That's more or less what happens. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I did. Is there was somewhere it used to be there? Yeah, it's up there. M rep n sub n. I did. 
I did. Chuck? Oh. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, that's great. Okay, so let that epsilon be this uh, the, the natural map, and if you take the kernel of epsilon, call it i, and then if you look at i mod i square, you get the, the log differentials. So there's a way to run away from log geometry and go back to usual geometry. Okay, so uh, now you can derive all this business. So you can uh, extend this to simplicial, oh, it's late. You can extend this to um, simplicial pre-log rings. Uh, you can derive the, well, the differentials in the usual way. And you get the definition of a cotangent complex. So let me just quickly say it right on the board. So uh, extend to, to a simplicial free log. That's what happened. So, um, yeah, okay. So, uh, how much do I want to say about that? So, you you believe me, right? If I say that you can uh, that you can define uh, the cotangent complex, right? So uh, how much how which take should I should I take on that? Yeah. So maybe okay. Maybe I just say that you go from simplicial pre-log rings maybe over under a m over a r r p to uh, simplicial modules over a right and uh, uh, yeah, and uh, for example, for example, so this just sends uh, the B, some B, N to the differentials, log differentials. So these are things over, this B is something over A. And for example, choosing polynomial resolutions. So people, some, some, someone in this audience will hate me for choosing a model for that, but uh, solutions, say P to A, and uh, also some, yeah, some maybe Q to M uh, defined cotangent complex of A, M, R, P, okay? There's the usual recipe for the cotangent complex. Right? You, you choose uh, three solutions on the monoid side, three solutions on the on the ring side, polynomial solutions. You form whatever you have to form, and you apply omega one level wise, and you get your cotangent complex. Whatever. Okay. So it's not. There's one way. Of course, you can phrase it in much more sophisticated ways. Uh, so this is a model for. For the cotangent complex for log things uh, defined by Gadbera, okay? So for the experts in log geometry, uh, there is also another definition due to Martin Olson, but that's not that one. This is actually, so that's a stacky approach. And this is a, uh, yeah, somehow is in, uh, internal to log geometry. And this is due to, due to Gadbera. The account is also in a paper by Olson. Uh, so this has a number of, Properties. So let me write a proposition. Uh, let's write our names because we couldn't find a reference. So, uh, well, I mean, there are similar results in the spectral case due to Sagave, um, Rognes, Sagave, and Schlicht rule. But in, the, in this case, it was not written down anywhere. So the first one is uh, let me describe this cotangent complex in, uh, in more uh, classical terms. So there is a cofiber sequence of this form. So Z, every tensor product will be derived. So M group, and the T group. Uh, here we have a cotangent complex in between. And here you have a classical cotangent complex relative to um, this guy, so R. 
them. So this is a cofiber sequence. If a map from P to M is integral, and let's put a, a pin on that because I will say something about this integrality assumption in a second. So, so I mean, I'm writing this so that you get some intuition on what is this thing supposed to, to be, right? So this is a very classical cotangent complex with respect to this ring here, so these are rings. And this is some of the difference between the, is measuring the difference between the two, the two gadgets, right? The cotangent, log cotangent complex and the classical guy, and the difference is measured by this thing. And this is really a cofiber of a map from, between the group completions, okay? P and P to N. Okay, well, this is what it is. Uh, it's invariant under logification. Means that if you, Pass from pre log rings to log rings, which I did not define in the simplicial context, but well, there is a definition. Then this doesn't alter the cotangent complex. So let's forget about that and work with pre log rings, keep working with pre log rings. Yeah. D log of, yeah, to D log of n. Yeah. That's the basic corresponding uh, sequence in, I mean, that's how you build the classical log differential, right? So by the, gluing together differentials along a, a equivalence relation, which tells you that whenever you can move things from one to the other, then you have to identify log differential with the classical differentials. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, maybe the other uh, interesting thing, which is a consequence of that observation of Kato Saito, is that if X to S is a map of uh, derived affine log schemes, you can, You can think about the definition. Then you can form the diagonal, and you can factor this diagonal as a in this replete guy. Okay, so there is a it's called the log diagonal or the replete diagonal, whatever. So this is the classical delta. Let's call this delta rep. And then this cotangent complex is uh, yeah. I mean it's the conorma sheep of this. Of a repeat diagonal. X of S, conormal, derived conormal of the repeat diagonal. Okay, so uh, now I'm really running out of time. So let me just say that one can use the cotangent complex to define. Um, so RP to AM is derived log smooth. Uh, sorry, derived log et al. There is another definition by Sagave, Shug, and Betsozi. If the derived cotangent complex, sorry, the log cotangent complex is contractible. Um, okay. Uh, this definition implies on the truncations on pi zero that you are log et al in the classical sense, but it's not equivalent. So you might have um, log et al maps of discrete rings for which the derived cotangent complex is not, con is not contractible, okay? So this is a somehow, so sounded a bit like a pathology of a, of a theory, but in fact, what is going on is that the definition of log et al in the classical, uh, in the classical case allows a really wild class of maps. So for example, there is no flatness assumption on the underlying map of um, uh, monoid algebras, okay? So uh, if, however, if you have a map uh, is of discrete log rings, log rings, uh, is uh, which is uh, integral. So if the map is integral and log et al. So integral means that uh, well the monoids are integral monoids, for example, and the and the push out uh, along this map of any integral monoid stays integral. If p is evaluative monoid, so for example, if p is n then the map is automatically integral. Any L in log et al map is automatically integral. 
So these are cases that we would like to consider, right? Because that's the case of a, of a DVR with a st standard log structure. That's the case of a semi-stable reduction and so on. Well, that's not a tab that is rather smooth, but anyway, they're all integral examples, okay? So it's not a crazy thing to consider. And somehow what I'm excluding here are some blow-ups, okay? So some log et al maps, which underlie uh, blow-ups of schemes. Yeah, that's the difference between being log et al and being integral log et al and throwing away those, uh, those maps. Okay, that I will try to recover later. Um, so if this is true, so if I have an, a map of discrete log rings, which is integral and log et al, then indeed the cotangent complex is contractible. So, so it's derived log et al in the sense I, I introduced before. So similarly, there is a notion of derived log smooth, okay? Which involves the cotangent complex. Uh, and again, if you have a log smooth map of discrete log rings, which is integral, it's also derived log smooth. So, and log smoothness for discrete log rings is defined in terms of square zero extensions as you would like to, to, to I mean, as we all would like to, to do, okay? So it's not a, it's not a crazy, you know, the crazy thing, and maybe the, um, uh, the good thing about that, and if uh, discrete plus integral plus log smooth, then the cotangent complex does what you expect. So the cotangent complex is concentrating degree zero and agrees with the differentials, log differentials. Okay, otherwise for arbitrary log smooth maps, the cotangent complex can spread in, uh, in uh, negative degrees, for log, even for log smooth maps. Okay, well, that's life. All right, so I think I can now state our uh, main theorem, the following. So, what is here? Oh, there, okay, ah, um, yeah, maybe here. So, Main theorem uh, right so let me phrase it in uh, um, using again using the under equivalent spectral C so so this 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 formulation is essentially a log analog of a statement that you can find in uh, Nikolaus Scholze so uh, you have h h r p a n, so this guy admits uh, descending and separated filtration and separated filtration um, with graded pieces lambda i of a cotangent complex. The local tangent complex with a, uh, I think I have a shift I here, which I forgot right here. Yeah, I think there is a shift. And uh, in particular, there is a convergence spectral sequence. Mm. So this is true for any simplicial pre log rings. Okay, I'm not, uh, I don't have any assumption so far. So E2 PQ, HP lambda Q of L converging to H P plus Q of H H A M, right? And uh, this, this degenerates for uh, integral log smooth maps. So, uh, right, so maybe a word in the proof. So somehow we have all the ingredients and uh, uh, in order to, to actually prove uh, the result, you need to um, exploit this uh, log diagonal approach 
uh, that we have seen in the case of a cotangent complex and it's due to Kato Saito in the case of differentials to build another model of, uh, of the auxiliar homology. That's what we do. So, uh, well, I just give it a sketch, but essentially the first step is to uh, identify, that's another, somehow that maybe this deserves to be called a theorem. It is a proposition. Uh, so Rognes is um, log auction homology defining that complicated way with repetition and this blah, 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 the bar construction as uh, this thing. So take the sort of derives of intersection of the log diagonal. So ta, 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 ta. Okay. Okay, so you can, if you can unravel the, the, the symbols that I wrote on the board, what I'm doing is exactly taking the, this uh, replete diagonal embedding and then putting, you know, uh, two copies of them and then taking the another, yet another pullback. Okay, and that's it. So once you have this description, then it's much clear that, well, it's kind of clear that this has to do with the differentials and it's exactly the same way as the usual auction homology has to do with the differentials. So that's what you need. So that was now one, the meat of a computation. And the second case is, well, you have to compute something somewhere. So this is the case of a free, free case of HKR. Okay, so you take free log algebras over the pair RP, which means you have a polynomial algebra, and then you add freely a monoid. And uh, essentially you add many, you have more variables and you have a log structure on some of the variables. That's a, that's a free algebra over, over RP. And then you have to work out the fact that in this case, the actual constant Rosenberg theorem holds, which is an explicit computation fairly similar to what happens in the classical case. So that's not difficult. It's a bit involved, but it's not difficult. Let me uh, give you a corollary. So once you have one and two, then you can uh, follow Quillen and build the spectral sequence and whatever. Okay, so as a corollary, we have uh, the following results. So suppose that we have, uh, well, for any derived log et al map, we have the following base change formula for actual homology. So, I mean, let me write the absolute situation, right? So where I do it over Z with no log structure. So this thing is quasi-isomorphic to H H of A M. So the non-log case of this formula was due to Chuck and uh, Geller, Susan Geller, long time ago, I guess. Uh, and for example, as a nice application, you have this kind of statement for tame, tamely ramified extensions of discrete evaluation rings, which are not et al, but are log et al, integral log et al. So, uh, for example, if you have R to A is a tamely ramified extension of DVR, then you have at H, H of A of log structure given by the classical one, canonical one, equivalent to A tensor H, H, R. Uh, yeah, uh, R minus zero over R, okay? So this kind of formula. And uh, uh, the fact that you have integral, uh, I mean, you have a base change along integral uh, maps in particular, so because integral maps of discrete log rings are in particular derived log et al, as I explained before, means you can globalize. Oh. You can globalize, globalize, uh, for uh, integral et al topology on uh, log rings. So no longer derive, you know, just discrete things, for example, and you can do a derived version presumably, but let me stick to that. Uh, for the experts, this is something coarser than the Kummer et al topology but uh, you know, finer than the strict et al topology. So you're allowing, you're allowing some log et al things which are not uh, strict et al, but not uh, super crazy log et al maps. 
So then you have a definition for for schemes, right? So if you have a, a map for so if you have a x s uh, well maybe well yeah maybe I should say that if x over s is a any log scheme and then you can define this thing okay by by uh, extension and uh, maybe right so maybe one one consequence of that is that well so now uh, i promise to explain the different what, what what i should do in order to get rid of this integrality assumption okay so now i'm running out of time but maybe let just me make a comment remark we can also uh localize this uh, hh as x as sheaves on log uh, log schemes or oh, they may define log schemes with respect to to the dividing topology so this is introduced by uh, myself to song and polarni in our uh, work on log motives and uh, uh, you get a new gadget Minis, which now satisfies by construction dividing descent, agrees with the old thing for uh, if x over s is integral and logs move, for example, but no, no, don't need logs move, but if it's integral, so I'm not doing something crazy for uh, the things that I wanted to have. So in particular on classical things, it's still the same gadget. So this dividing operation is not doing something uh, outrageous and now becomes representable in our category of motives. Okay, so the old, as, as a con, big consequence of this thing, we get that the auxiliomology, the extensions to log schemes is representable in, uh, in log, in log, uh, log motives. Hmm? Log uh, version, the dividing is navish version of uh, log uh, SH. And uh, as another piece of information, well, I mentioned that there are two notions of a cotangent complex for, for log schemes. One is due to Olson and the other one is due to Gabber and the two things are known to be different. Well, they happen to agree if you simplify both for the dividing topology. So the difference is really captured in a topological, by this topological, uh, by the choice of topology. Okay. So, right. So um, maybe one application of the fact that you can represent these kind of things in uh, uh, log DM over a field is that you have residue sequences there. So the analog of a uh, of a localization fails in well, localization fails in logarithmic motives, but you have an analog, which is this kind of residue or Giesian sequence. If you apply the residue or Giesian sequence to um, to auxil homology, you get something which looks like the sequence constructed by Rognes and Sagave and, uh, and Schlickskrull, or the, the, the sequence constructed by Hesselt and Matson, special case. It's a third sequence, so it's not clear if it's um, equivalent to one of the two, okay? So we believe it's closer to the one uh, constructed by SLT and Madsen, but it's work in progress. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Are there any questions? So um, this, uh, H H uh, is represented in the category of motives yeah. over the standard S. log point. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, for, for so example. Yeah. yeah, other question is- um, any, any, Pretty much anything actually. Any okay. fine separate log scheme at least. And uh, what is the difference between this integral etal topology and the cumulative etal topology? Can I- uh, This is uh, coarser than the cumulative etal topology. That's, uh, but some geometrical intuition on that, like- uh, so, uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, for example, this cumulative topology, I can understand it is like taking the roots of the of the device or yeah, 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 but, right, uh, right. Um, well, okay. So actually, the so depends on the monoid you begin with. Okay. So if the mono, if the, the, the monoid you are if the monoid some, somehow downstairs is valuative. So for example, if it's free, then it is Kummer. Mm -hmm. But there are some differences, okay? So 
yeah, not every Kummer et al map is a, is an integral log et al map, if I understand correctly. But but thanks. I mean, Kummer means integral plus. Uh, sorry, means exact plus log et al, right? So yeah. So um, well, and exact is yeah. Anyway, <laughs> something. Any other questions? I mean, you, you already have a very low <laughs> voice, a deal. And <laughs> uh, so the, at the end, you mentioned that you have some new yeah. localization or Gizen sequence. Would you mind saying like a little bit more? How yeah, I can. Uh, I can say that. So let me at least say it in a in a very special case. Okay. So, I mean. Okay, so let me work in the category of motives over a point, not a log point. Okay, so in uh, in log in log dm over k, okay, then you can consider the following thing. So you have say x is a okay, say x is smooth, keem over k, no log structure, and uh, let's say that z inside x is a smooth divisor. Okay, so in uh, in classical, I mean, the classical localization for motives would tell you something like you have a motive of x and uh, the motive of x minus z, and then you have a motive of, uh, well, before actually, you have a motive of x minus z, and then after you have a motive of z with a twist and a shift. Okay, so here the situation is similar, except from the fact that you don't have a motive of a complement, but rather the, the log motive that you obtain if you put z in the log structure. So this is a replacement for the, for the complement of z in x. Okay, then you have the motive of x, and here have the motive of z with a twist and a shift. Okay, that's the analog of a, of a localization sequence. So uh, algebraically, how does that look as a log structure? Like, what does it mean to say x this thing? comma z? Yeah. Let's oh, say it's, uh, well, it, locally is really just saying that you have a divisor. You're, 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 I mean, it's a principal divisor. You have an equation. Then you're just sending n to a. A is a coordinate, say, gamma, you know, gamma u uh, ox, mm -hmm. and locally around the point in, in the divisor. And you're sending a little n to f to the n. Where f is the local equation for for d for z. Okay. Okay. So, so this is the log structure that you this is log structure that you would like to consider. Okay. And and uh, but that's the that's the fiber sequence. Yeah. Mm. Uh, there is an analog in case of higher co-dimension, of course. So in that case, you have to what, what we do is is you you blow up uh, the z inside x, and and then on the exceptional divisor you consider the log structure used by sorry on the blow up you consider the log structure used by the exceptional divisor. Okay. okay, so this is like like a somehow what you're allowing yourself is to take a blow ups in the locus where the log structure is supported, and there you there you have like a new motive, and then you get this kind of uh, analog of sequence. So if you apply HH to this thing, mm -hmm. now suppose that you know X is a ring and uh, and Z is a is a, you know F mm -hmm. V of F, and here you have something like the auction homology of of A log log auction homology of A relative to F, and here you have a log auction homology of uh, a modulo f. So these two things are, would be classical. This shift here now becomes just a shift in degree. You know, you know auction homology, you know, forms don't right. really see the twist. Right? Well, they see it in a, yeah, on the differential side. Okay, sorry, I'm talking too much. <laughs> but it looks really like that sounds very similar to the, like Rognus's DVR thing you mentioned at the beginning. Right? The maps are, the, the sequences are diff it's kind of different. In opposite direction. So it's close. So this is really a Giesin map, the one that you have. Yeah. So it seems easier to compare it with a map that you have in K theory. Yeah, but maybe there's like a Borelmore version of this sequence for like singular schemes, and then you instead of motive, you take Borelmore motive or mm -hmm. something. That would look more like, because then it would go in the other direction, like Robinson's. I mean, you know, you have two sequences, and the three terms are the same, but you don't know the maps. I see. So you need to, you know, identify the maps in order to, well, two, two or three terms are the same. And, but that's a comparison with the S.O. Matson and the Rognes uh, thing. Yeah. Okay. No, that's a difficult problem. I mean, to compare the two objects. I think.
Any other questions? Mark, are there any questions in the uh, chat? No. Then, <laughs> thank you.